The readings will now be given by Gary from Plainfield. I will read from the Bible. Psalms. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Fear not, for I am with thee. Psalms. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Matthew. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Mark. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Luke Fear not, little flock, 
for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Romans What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I will now read correlative passages from Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. God is our Father and our Mother, our Minister and the Great Physician. He is man's only real relative on earth and in heaven. David sang, Whom have I in heaven but thee? and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Brother, sister, beloved in the Lord, knowest thou thyself, and art thou acquainted with God? If not, I pray thee as a Christian scientist, delay not to make him thy first acquaintance. Glorious things are spoken of you in his word. Ye are a chosen people, whose God is, what? Even all. May mercy and truth go before you. May the lamp of your life continually be full of oil, and you be wedded to the spiritual idea, Christ. Then will you heal and teach and preach on the ascending scale of everlasting life and love. The scriptures require more than a simple admission and feeble acceptance of the truths they present. They require a living faith that so incorporates their lessons into our lives that these truths become the motive power of every act. Mortal man believes in, but does not understand life in Christ. He believes that there is another power or intelligence that rules over a kingdom of its own that is both good and evil, yea, that is divided against itself, and therefore cannot stand. This belief breaks the first commandment of God. Let man abjure a theory that is in opposition to God. Recognize God as omnipotent, having all power, and placing his trust in this grand truth, and working from no other principle, he can neither be sick nor forever a sinner. When wholly governed by the one perfect mind, man has no sinful thoughts, and will have no desire to sin. To arrive at this point of unity, of spirit, God, one must commence by turning away from material gods, denying material so-called laws, 
and material sensation, or mind in matter, in its varied forms of pleasure and pain. This must be done with the understanding that matter has no sense. Thus it is that consciousness silences the mortal claim to life, substance, or mind in matter. With the words of Jesus, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. John 8. When tempted to sin, we should know that evil proceedeth not from God good, but is a false belief of the personal senses. And if we deny the claims of these senses and recognize man is governed by God, spirit, not by material laws, the temptation will disappear. On this principle, disease also is treated and healed. We know that man's body as matter has no power to govern itself. And a belief of disease is as much the product of mortal thought as sin is. All suffering is the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of both good and evil, of adherence to the double-minded senses, to some belief, fear, theory, or bad deed, based on physical material law so-called, as opposed to good, all of which is corrected alone by science, divine principle, and its spiritual laws. Suffering is the supposition of another intelligence than God, a belief in self-existent evil opposed to good, and in whatever seems to punish man for doing good by saying he has overworked, suffered from inclement weather, or violated a law of matter in doing good. Therefore, he must suffer for it. God does not reward benevolence and love with penalties. And because of this, we have the right to deny the supposed power of matter to do it, and to allege that only mortal erring mind can claim to do thus, and dignify the result with the name of law. Thence comes man's ability to annul his own erring mental law and to hold himself amenable only to moral and spiritual law, God's government. By so doing, male and female come into their rightful heritage, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Heaven be praised for the signs of the times. Let the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing. Our trust is in the Almighty God, who ruleth in heaven and upon earth. And none can stay his hand, or say, What doest thou? Trust in truth, and have no other trusts. Beloved children, the world has need of you, and more as children than as men and women. It needs your innocence, unselfishness, faithful affection, uncontaminated lives. You need also to watch and pray that you preserve these virtues unstained, and lose them not through contact with the world. 
What grander ambition is there than to maintain in yourselves what Jesus loved and to know that your example, more than words, makes morals for mankind.